Uh, good day, everyone. Um, yeah, some of you might know me, Patrick O'Brien. I work for New South Wales DPI and I coordinate the Native Game Bird Management Program. So you might be wondering what the Native Game Bird Management Program is, but essentially um, it allows landholders to sustainably manage native game birds that are impacting on their agricultural land by utilising licensed hunters who hold a current New South Wales game hunting licence and have passed the waterfowl identification test. As a department, we are required to set sustainable harvest quotas each year, uh, and we need to base those quotas on the best scientific information available. To establish a quota, we need to, or we conduct aerial um, surveys using a helicopter and on-ground surveys using drones. And that information helps us establish an estimate of a population size in the Riverina. Favourable waterfowl breeding conditions were experienced during 2021 or 2020 and 2021. And analysis from this year's surveys indicates that there has been a substantial increase in the amount of game birds in the Riverina. So if we have a look at the estimation of abundance and sustainable harvest quotas for 2021-2022, uh, you see down the bottom there over a million ducks in the Riverina. Uh, estimated this year. So that's uh, a quota of about 114,950. Uh, what's uh, good to note is um, of that 114,950, 97% uh, comprise of grey teal, Australian wood duck and Pacific black duck. And they're the three species that uh, impact the rice the most. Uh, if we compare 2020 survey and the 2021 survey, uh, you'll see that there's been an increase of almost 700,000. Uh, across the board there, all the species have increased from last year with the exception of hardhead and that's just slightly down. And again, grey teal, Australian wood duck, Pacific black duck, you know, they're the species that have really rebounded um, with the wet weather conditions over the past couple of years. Uh, it's worth noting that, yeah, the Australian wood duck, so that's a, that's a substantial increase. We haven't seen an increase uh, quite that big before. And um, yeah, we, we, you know, I suspect that they're gonna be, um, a major culprit on the rice um, this coming season. So we have a look at the last uh, seven years, and this is the, the quotas that are issued each year. You'll see that 2021-22 uh, is sort of on par with 2016-17 and 2015-16. 2016-17 um, was a really um, a wet year wet season um, and there were quite a lot of duck impacts that year so it's sort of shaping shaping up to be um, similar to 2016-17 but you know that can change very quickly with uh, more more rain or flooding rains potentially over the next couple of months so if you're applying for your duck management license this year and, and you're growing rice all you have to do is tick the yes box on your seed order um, and then you've also got to select an allocation. So that's a, a property allocation. And you might be thinking, well, what is a property allocation? But essentially uh, it's three different types of, um, or amounts of species that you can get applied to each farm. So allocation one is, is 100 wood duck, 100 black duck, 100 gray teal. Allocation two is 150 of each. Allocation three is 250 of each. So if you are participating in the program this year, you know, I'd probably just be selecting two or three. Um, I mean, if you don't never get any duck impacts, then yes, you can go for allocation one, but we've got a, a fairly uh, healthy harvest quota this year. So, um, you, you know, you might as well go for number two or number three. And, and if, you know, if they don't cause an issue, then well, they won't get harvested by hunters and uh, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so growers who aren't growing rice this year can still apply uh, to participate in Native Game Bird Management Program. Um, there's a standard application form that they can fill out. So if you know any of them or, or your neighbours, um, just get them to, to give uh, the wildlife management support team a, a call and we can email that form out. Uh, just a note that those growers participating in the program this year, um, you will get a call from Jim Small, who's our compliance officer located in Deliquin and um, he basically wants to seek permission from you to go onto your property and um, conduct a compliance check on your hunters, essentially. And it's really important that uh, we can demonstrate to the, the people and the, and the um, 
some of the politicians that would rather uh, not see this program exist and we need to demonstrate that hunters participating and landholders participating are um, are doing the right thing, are being compliant and following the rules. So, you know, one way we can we can demonstrate a compliance rate for hunters is for, for Jim to obviously talk to them and they're on your properties. And so we want to um, do the right thing and make contact with you and make sure you're happy for, for uh, compliance guys like Jim to to go on and talk to these hunters. And, and it's for your own benefit. You know, we want to make sure these hunters are doing doing the right thing. So what are the benefits of holding a duck management license? Uh, first and foremost, um, there's no cost associated with it. So it's a really good thing. Um, it's $25 million public liability insurance. Um, well, the hunters come with that if you're using licensed hunters. If you're not using licensed hunters, then effectively they're illegally hunting and there's no liability insurance. Um, so if something was to happen, the landholder, um, you'd be liable. You've also got access to the landholder register, which is where licensed hunters can contact you. So we provide that list on our online services portal and it's only available to licensed hunters. Uh, and then you've got the hunter register where uh, we can actually provide you a list of licensed hunters and you can initiate contact with them and, and book them in weeks in advance. So just a couple of reminders. Um, you need to ensure that hunters do hold a current New South Wales game hunting license. Um, and the other thing is, even though the onus is on the hunters to complete their harvest returns, it's always good if you can just encourage them to do so. Um, sometimes I'll just forget about it. Um, and again, the onus is on them to, to do that harvest return. But when they um, hear it coming from the landholder, they're, they're more likely to do it and they're more likely to do it within the 14 days. So COVID-19 travel restrictions. Um, I did a little bit of number crunching the other day and worked out that out of our 2,792 current native game bird hunters, um, a fair portion reside in Victoria, so 72%, um, and 22% reside in New South Wales, and the vast majority of them actually reside in metropolitan Melbourne and Sydney. So that's going to pose some um, implications to, to travel into the rice growing um, region this year. So we're just encouraging growers to jump onto the DPI website and, and, and monitor the, the various um, public health orders and just get up to date information. And it is changing on a daily, weekly basis, but um, yeah, start to think about, you know, whereabouts your hunters are from, if they're from Victoria, if they're from Melbourne, um, you know, jump onto some of those websites and just see if there's some avenues there for them to, to come across and assist you. Um, my understanding is if they're based in Victoria, there is a permit system potentially for them to come across. The issue is that they have to quarantine um, when they arrive back home for 14 days. And so that's, you know, that's probably something that a lot of them are gonna wanna do. Um, so you just need to keep that in mind and, and you know, perhaps start thinking about that and, and having a chat to your hunters and work out where they're from. Uh, so we can help run the waterfowl identification test, which is a requirement when shooting ducks part of the program. Um, you know, Jim's located in Dillon I'm in Albury. We can set up maybe a, a Zoom meeting or a Microsoft Teams meetings and do them online. So if you have any of your family members or employees that, you know, are going to potentially have to do a bit more duck control this year and they don't have their um, waterfowl identification test, just reach out and, and um, yeah, let us know and we'll, we'll try and book you in and, and try to get uh, everything sorted um, by the time your rice gets planted. So quick summary, so favourable breeding conditions uh, were seen in 2020 and 2021 and the estimated population size is, is over a million in, and that's just the Riverina alone. And that's an increase of around 700,000. So COVID-19 travel restrictions may impact your regular hunters traveling from metropolitan Melbourne and Sydney. So you really need to plan ahead and, and making sure that you opt in first and foremost by ticking the box for your duck management license and don't wait till we have a duck problem and then wanna change your seed order and tick the box. It's just good just to tick it and have it there ready to go. You really need to use other duck deterrents. Um, so light sirens, light siren combinations, they, they are pretty effective but um, you know, they're, they're essential to have with licensed hunters um, to really um, control those ducks effectively and make sure that they're in <clears throat> good working order. Um, if they need a, a bit of gas refilled or, or a bit of um, 
TLC, yeah, definitely um, just make sure they're all in good working order. Uh, consider placing your name on the landholder register when you receive this form. So we'll send that form to you when your license is allocated this year. And, and you know, I just encourage you to, to, to use, utilise that system. Um, yes, you might get a few phone calls, but it might be local hunters who are able to come and assist you and you can sort of book them in, you know, for the first couple of weeks where your ISIS gets planted. And that's obviously when it's susceptible to a lot of duck damage. And the last point is don't wait for ducks to become a, a big problem. Um, you really need to keep on top of them. So when the first few mobs start to, um, you know, land on your rice, you, you really need to sort of get there moving and, and don't sort of wait till the numbers build up because, you know, there can be some real big numbers turn up overnight and then all of a sudden you've got a, a pretty big duck problem. And that's it from me. So happy to take any questions if there are any.